Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the weekend of May the 25th and May the 26th, 2024. So when I immigrated to the US on that day, I flew into SeaTac Airport in sort of Seattle, Tacoma. I uh, came in with this big brown envelope with all the stuff from uh, immigration, something that I had to hand in at, at immigration to get my entry into the country and took a bit of time to process, there's a bit of nervousness. And then before I got through this immigration officer he said to me very seriously, he said, you know, one thing you must not do when you're in the US, you must not do, you must not vote. And I have stuck to that, you know, I do not vote because I'm not a US citizen. And uh, so voting is something very sort of speculative to me. I mean, I can hypothesize about what I would vote if I could vote. And it's, you know, always very difficult. And I know that uh, sometimes I'm accused of political bias um, in this channel, that I'm told I should stick to the astrology and uh, not be biased. So, yeah, I don't, don't think you can possibly do that. We all have our biases. And of course, we are now talking about the election coming up in November with Trump and Biden. And it's 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 complicated, isn't it? And I always do ask myself, who would I vote for if, if I did have a vote? And, uh, you know, it is a difficult one. And I, I think when you're choosing between Trump and Biden, I think to a great extent, the key question is, how do you want to die? I think that's really what it is about, you know, or or rather perhaps how do you not want to die? I think that uh, if the idea of dying in a nuclear war fills you with dread, if you regard that as being the worst way to die, then, then probably you should vote for Trump. I think that, uh, you know, Trump, relatively speaking, is a candidate of peace. Um, um, he's he's not a warmonger, I don't think. And uh, whereas with you know with Biden, he seems to be keen to provoke Russia and seems to not really care about you know Russia's red lines and the fact that Russia is a nuclear power. And uh, if you push Russia too hard, uh, then you might get uh, a nuclear war. You could do certainly a nuclear exchange. On the other hand. What about dying in terms of suffocation? Um, uh, the climate just collapsing, um, garbage, pollution, um, yeah, the environment being wrecked. Well, in that case, you should probably vote for Biden. I mean, Trump couldn't care less about the environment. Uh, he really couldn't. I, I don't think he gets the environment. He, you know, he, he wants the oil companies to just be able to pretty much do what they like. Um, already his, you know, his Supreme Court has, um, you know, removed some of the federal protections on wetlands. And yeah, so Trump is an environmental disaster. So yeah, so it does depend on how you want to die. So I really don't know how, I'm, how if I did have a vote, I, I don't really know how I would vote. Um, I, I don't know. But anyway, it's all hypothetical because the immigration officer made it quite clear that I shouldn't vote and I, I'll, I'll do what I'm told. So I'm not going to vote. Um, and my opinion is, you know, I'm, I'm rather confused about about the matter. Of course, there are other things to, con be, to, concern, to be concerned about, like um, domestic policy, but I don't want to go into that. But still, I am going to talk about Trump in this video. And I haven't done an update on Trump for a bit of time. You know, he's just had this rally in, in, in is it the South Bronx. Uh, seems that the rally has been quite successful. I think uh, the last couple of days was quite important for Trump. Um, there were some interesting things going on with the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. 
and the fact that we've got Uranus coming up to Trump's midheaven. And uh, I think that that is uh, uh, something we do need to consider. But before I look at Trump, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for this weekend, which is a weekend of May the 25th and May the 26th, 2024. So let's uh, look at the chart. So this chart is set for the middle of the weekend. Um, and no, actually, that's my chart. I'm, I will be talking about my chart at some stage, but I'm not going to talk about it right now. This is the chart for the weekend. And there it is, May the 26th, 2024, at midnight, which is the midpoint in the weekend. Um, I know that May the... Is it May the 27th? It's Memorial Day. I think that May the 27th might be a holiday in the, Amer in the US, but still, I'm going to treat... Monday as being a normal day. So that's uh, May the 26th, 2024 at midnight. And you can see that the moon is in Capricorn. Uh, so the moon actually went into Capricorn London time at 4.36pm on Saturday. So for most of the weekend, uh, the moon is in Capricorn, though there is a certain time zone issue. If you are in Europe, then for much of Saturday, the moon will be in Sagittarius. If you're in Australia and New Zealand, then for all of Saturday, um, the moon will be in Sagitt the moon will be in Sagittarius. Not just Australia and New Zealand, but East Asia, uh, for example. If you watch from the Philippines, as I believe some people do, then you really should regard um, Saturday as being a Sagittarius day and Sunday as being a Capricorn day. Now, if you are in the Americas, then uh, late morning on a Saturday, moon moves into moon moves into Capricorn. Uh, early more fairly early morning if you're uh, in in california so in the west coast so if you're in the americas you can possibly regard saturday as being mainly a capricorn day sorry mainly a, a sorry if you're in the americas you can pretty much regard most of a weekend as being um, having a moon in capricorn if you're in if you're in europe it's 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 more late Saturday and, and Sunday. And yes, if you're um, East Asia, Australasia, then it's uh, Saturday, Sagitt Moon in Sagittarius, Sunday, Moon in Capricorn, as a simplification. And the Moon, just before it moves into Capricorn, there it is, Moon in Capricorn, just before it moves into Capricorn, it makes a square aspect to Neptune. So, on Saturday, particularly early Saturday, there could be a little bit of uncertainty. You know, Moon in Capricorn is trying to make sense of things. Sorry, Moon in Sagittarius is trying to make is is trying to make sense of things. Has some big ideas, some interesting ideas, but perhaps might get the wrong ideas. That is a possibility. And also on Saturday we have Mercury semi-square Neptune. And I think we can really regard that Mercury semi-square Neptune as being a feature of the whole weekend. So Mercury is um, actually in quite an important position because you notice at, no at noon on, um, sorry, at the middle of a weekend, uh, midnight on, on Sunday, Mercury is at 15 degrees, 12 minutes Taurus. So it's actually 45 degrees, the 45 degrees from the Aries point and so it's um, in a, a really very communicative prominent position at, at 15 degrees Taurus and it is semi-square Neptune so Neptune is close to the Aries point Mercury is semi-square the Aries point and so with that Mercury semi-square Neptune 
um, people are going to be saying a lot of stuff and there's going to be a lot of lies flying around this weekend, no doubt about it. Um, so if you listen to what people say, don't take what they say at face, face value. And I think that uh, we may misunderstand what's going on. Um, we may be deceived. We may be the ones do the deceiving. And, you know, information from official channels should not necessarily be trusted. Um, countries, politicians, organisations, they're just going to be full of themselves. And it could, you know, we could get the idea that we're dealing with lie machines. And um, I suppose you could... <laughs> connect Mercury semi square Neptune with fake news being, being, being trying to you know we're trying that we're someone is trying to manipulate us so that's that's all about what Mercury semi square Neptune is about but there is going to be a general air of confusion and it it may be at the personal level just things are not going to make um a full sense and perhaps we shouldn't make decisions this weekend because if we were to make decisions they might turn out to be the wrong decisions based on false information now on sunday at quarter past midnight london time just as saturday moves to sunday jupiter moves into gemini i've talked about that uh, already that is a big change Jupiter moves out of Taurus into Gemini and in one sense this is a good thing because things are going to be more um, more active you know, Jupiter is how we try to expand how we try to look for new horizons Gemini is um, a positive masculine sign uh, sort of ideas all over the place but the ideas can literally be all over the place to, to the extent where we have so many ideas that we have just no concept of any broad principles. And actually, with that Jupiter and Gemini, there can be something quite amoral about it. Um, Jupiter, remember, is in its detriment in, in Gemini. And it's, um, it's, that is because Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Gemini is the opposite sign. So Jupiter is in its detriment. So we shouldn't necessarily regard Jupiter and Gemini as being a good thing. Uh, although I think we are going to have a lot to say, just bear in mind that we've also got that Mercury semi-square Neptune so, uh, this weekend. So if we, if, we get an, if we feel an immediate impact from Jupiter and Gemini, uh, we, we, may, we may find that it's not necessarily positive. So we do have to be careful what we say and we should... Um, try not to talk too much but maybe with the moon in Capricorn uh, that is uh, going to sort of slow us down a little um, so another aspect that actually is exact on Saturday that I didn't mention is Venus trine, Blu Venus trine Pluto um, there is Venus trine Pluto and I think we can regard Venus as being trine Pluto all weekend it's a relatively gentle aspect because it's a trine and Venus trine Pluto can be gently persuasive. I mean, Venus is a planet of relationships, and um, it's 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 Venus in. Uh, sorry, did I say Venus trine Pluto? Yes, Venus trine Pluto. Because yeah, I forgot Venus is now in Gemini. I keep thinking that Gem that uh, that uh, I keep thinking that Venus is in Taurus. It's not. Yeah, Venus trine Pluto, and so it can be quite persuasive remember venus is in gemini venus has got a lot to say for itself now and this is perhaps many of us with venus in gemini are perhaps relating through our words and so perhaps through our words carefully spoken we can get things to move our way uh, but we can be on the receiving end of that so venus trying pluto could mean people trying to persuade us to think things do things uh, that we don't want necessarily want to do, but it all seems very innocent. Um, so uh, that is um, something to be aware of. Venus trine Pluto could also be about a different view about money. You know, we often forget that Pluto is a planet that is connected with money. Remember the word plutocracy. Plutocracy is, uh, I, I believe, a plutocracy is a government which is run by people with money. 
So that comes from the word Pluto. Pluto is about money. It can be about buried treasure. Uh, it can be a concern about what we have and what we don't have. And perhaps with Venus trying Pluto, we can relate to people um, in a way that could be to our benefit financially. Also on Sunday, the moon in Capricorn makes a trine to Mercury and that may bring things down to earth. I mean, okay, Venus, Mercury might be semi sex, semi might be semi square Neptune, but Mercury is also in Taurus, and perhaps Moon in Capricorn trying Taurus may help bring things down to earth. You know, and you know some of these deluded ideas I've been talking about. Perhaps we can find a way around them, and we can actually start to focus on the the things that matter, the details and the facts that matter, and so that's the main aspect on Sunday. So overall, I would have said that Saturday is probably a busier day astrologically from Sunday. And Sunday, there may be a sense that there is less going on. Turning to the heliocentric picture, I mean, this is really just to show you what it looks like. Uh, I tend not to look at it beforehand. I should really be looking at it beforehand to kind of prepare myself. But uh, here it is. Um, there's not a tremendous amount going on uh, this weekend. Um, you can see that, well, the, the main aspect this weekend, heliocentrically, is the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. I talked about that Venus-Jupiter conjunction, um, I think, yesterday. The heliocentric Venus-Jupiter conjunction. It is separating, but it's exact this weekend. And so I think that uh, that perhaps has has an op optimistic implication there. You know, Venus, Jupiter, heliocentrically, it means that people can get on. It's very positive, it's very optimistic, and we can be happy. I mean, I know I sometimes tend to focus on a negative, but heliocentric Venus conjunct Jupiter, yeah, there, there is stuff to be happy about. There's stuff that we can celebrate and we can just enjoy being alive. And... Um, there may be a fair amount of good fortune flying around if we know where to look for it. So I don't think that is um, much of a problem, that Venus-Jupiter conjunction. Um, and that's really the main thing going on heliocentrically. So having done that, um, I want to look at what's going on this weekend from the perspective of the 12 signs. Okay, let me uh, do that. Okay. That's back to the geocentric picture. And these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for the weekend of May the 25th and 26th, 2024. Aries. Things are starting to change. You know, you know recently, you know, you have felt that you did have a lot of energy at your disposal. You didn't always know where to put that energy, but it was certainly there. And perhaps you were starting to become aware of many different possibilities. And uh, there might have been a certain tendency to scatter that energy. And I think you've still got that to some extent on, on Saturday. So on Saturday... Uh, you might be thinking, what should you be focusing on? You you may trip yourself up a little bit on Saturday um, by deciding that something is important and then sort of realising that it's actually not as important as you thought and you could actually end up putting, your, putting a lot of energy into something that uh, is actually a complete delusion. So do do watch out for that. And at the same time, you know, many uh, many Aryans are going to perhaps find their voice uh, over the weekend. 
you may realize that it's or decide but it's all in the message there's just there's a lot to say and you perhaps want to say it now but you do have to be a little bit careful about what you say and how you say it because you could be a little bit hasty uh, there may be a certain a certain tendency to talk too much but you're thinking on thinking on two levels because yes you know there is a lot to say but as the weekend progresses as the moon moves into capricorn um, there is a change of emphasis and i think that many arians are going to realize that um, there are things that have to be done and they have to be done right you know and, you know, Moon, when it's in Capricorn, is moving through a high-profile sector of your chart, a sector that's often connected with advancement and what you're trying to achieve. And so this might be something that you start to take seriously. What are your ambitions? And I think you'll start to realize that in order to get what you want, you're going to have to be very focused and very serious and you may even have to be a little bit selfish i mean not too selfish because you know yesterday i was talking about you know a, a humanitarian streak which i think was coming out into the open and i think that is still there but i think this weekend you are somewhat focused on on your needs and i don't think that's i don't think that's a problem and i think also in terms of how you relate to other people i i think that you're coming over i think quite strongly i you're you know relatively charismatic this weekend and you have there's something about you that people like and you, uh, that people are attracted to and i think if you really are keen on getting someone's attention and getting someone's support i think you'll you'll know what to do and you'll know how to behave taurus you are now really beginning to feel the fact that Venus, your ruler, is is in Gemini. Um, it is a big change with Venus, Venus now in Gemini. And I think that in one sense, you're more open-minded. You know, Gemini is, after all, a, a, a double-bodied sign. <laughs> Gemini is is mutable it's it's about seeing things from two different perspectives and um, you really can see two sides of the coin and i think in one sense that is good because you're able to understand how another person is thinking and you'll also you're also able to, un to understand that there are several ways of doing things but that could also lead to indecisiveness. You may not be sure which is, what is the right way of doing things. You can see that there's this way and there's that way. And which way do you go for? And it might be confusing, especially as Venus is now starting to move towards the conjunction, conjunction of the sun. Now, that conjunction of the sun is going to take a long time to work its way through, uh, you know, we could be talking weeks because that's because Venus and the Sun, although they're conjunct, they're moving at roughly the same speed. So Venus is catching up with the Sun, but it's not doing it. It's not doing it in a timely way. So I mean, looking at, looking at when Venus catches up with the Sun, uh, Venus will catch up with the Sun uh, off the top of my head. Uh, on about the 12th of june so um Ven until the until the 12th of 12th of june venus is getting closer and closer to to the sun and 
during that time for the next, I don't know, uh, uh, what's the next couple of weeks, you just have to watch out. You just might, you might find that there is just something in your way that you just cannot see the full picture. And as, as I suggested yesterday, it might be your family, it might be some aspect of your home uh, that's a bit bothering you, but just pre preventing you from really make a cl making a clear, objective decision. So you do have to be a bit careful about that. And also, Venus, Jupiter is now out of your sign. Jupiter has left Taurus, or Jupiter leaves Taurus Saturday, Sunday, depends on your time zone. So with Jupiter leaving Taurus, there might be a certain sense of disappointment. Though, looking at the comments um, on my channel, and a couple of people have talked about you know, what it is meant for Jupiter to be in, be in Taurus from a Taurian perspective, they may have felt that Jupiter has, in Taurus has been a little bit disappointing. You know, Jupiter is supposed to be the most fortunate planet and it is, has been moving through Taurus and you'd, you'd think that that was um, good news. I mean, Taurus is a bit slow. Uh, it, you, perhaps, you know, expecting the good results quickly might have been a bit too much and maybe Jupiter in Taurus was about creating the foundations of something. And at the time that you were creating the foundations, it may not have been immediately obvious. But perhaps with Jupiter moving into Gemini, that um, allows one to get a perspective and to perhaps um, see results. Because and you could argue that you know, Jupiter in Taurus is the beginning of something. Uh, and then as it moves into Taurus, as it moves into Gemini, then you start to see the results and you know i say it from my own perspective um you know i'm okay i don't have the sun in taurus but i have taurus rising so in many respects i can say that jupiter has been in my um from the ascendant's perspective has been uh in my first house and i don't know i I actually, I think I started this channel when Jupiter went into Taurus in February 2023. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, depends on your perspective, doesn't it? But uh, I did start the channel when Jupiter went into Taurus. Um, so I'm hoping for myself that with Jupiter and Gemini, well, I mean, logically, Jupiter and Gemini, I hope I can start really being able to profit from my channel. That would be my fantasy. Um but I don't want to project my experience of Jupiter in Taurus um, onto you. And I understand we all have our own ways of looking at things. And I, I still think that perhaps with Jupiter and Gemini, if you're a Taurus, you, you may be able to benefit from things which you started while Jupiter was in Taurus, but you may not realize you started it. You didn't really see it as a start at the time. But perhaps in retrospect, you all start to see what changes happened in the last year and how you can maybe start to benefit from them. Now, this weekend, the moon goes into Capricorn and Capricorn is an Earth sign and uh, you're, a, you're, you're a Taurus, so Taurus is an Earth sign. And so there is um, an affinity there with Moon in Capricorn and your and your uh, and your sign. So perhaps with Moon in Capricorn, you know, it is a time to review things um, from both a serious, self-orientated perspective, and also from a perspective um, of hope and vision you know with moon in capricorn be a little tough on yourself in terms of what you have achieved and what you haven't achieved um, but also consider what needs to be done next and you know try to be positive and optimistic uh, but also realistic and i don't think you know, that's uh, that's going to be a problem for you and i think that you know, on Sunday in particular, when the moon makes a trine to Mercury, uh, 
you can really get some uh, get some good ideas, and I think that a lot of things will start to make sense. And some Torreans may be able to take an idea that seems a little far fetched and bring it down to earth. And I think you may be helped by a trine between um, moon and moon and moon and Uranus, which is I think that's moon trine Uranus is going to be more about Monday, but. The moon is making a trine to Mercury and eventually making a trine to, to Uranus. And perhaps you may get some inspiration which you can bring down to Earth and actually use in a way that can benefit yourself, benefit you. And isn't, that's, that's, that's a good thing. Moon in Capricorn is a little bit selfish and that's OK. Gemini. It's, it's quite... Uh, an active time for Geminis. There is a lot going on. Uh, Jupiter is moving into your sign. Um, you know, every twelve years, Jupiter goes into Gemini, and now it's happening again. Uh, uh, so, this could be, you know, a time of great optimism for you, having Jupiter moving into your sign. Jupiter is traditionally the planet of good luck. You know, when Jupiter moves, moves into Gemini, things often start working for Geminis. Now, there are problems, of course, with Jupiter and Gemini, because Jupiter is in its, in its detriment in Gemini. Um, doesn't work too well in this sign. But still, it is Jupiter. And you know, over the next year, Jupiter will be making a conjunction to your sun, quite when that it makes a conjunction to your, to your sun. Sorry. Uh, from if you're looking at this, if you're looking at this from a perspective of the sun sign, um, I understand that some people will be looking, in fact, a lot of people are looking at this from a perspective of the ascendant and um, about, or perhaps from the moon. And the Jupiter Gemini thing you know we feel it straight away jupiter is now in um is now in gemini and um i think whether you're looking at it from a perspective of the sun or the ascendant or the moon the point is jupiter is now in the same sign as the sun or the moon or the ascendant and i think we get an immediate lift with jupiter moving into moving into gemini and we can start to see the, the possibilities. And for many of us, it might feel that we've spent, or sorry, for many Geminis, um, whether I'm a Gemini or not kind of depends on how, um, whether I look at it from the perspective of the sun or the ascendant. I do not have Gemini rising. I have Taurus rising. But there can be a sense that with Jupiter moving into Gemini, there's been a time of preparation, a, a time of maybe even isolation, of holding something back while Jupiter has been in Taurus. But now Jupiter's moved into moving into Gemini. We're ready to go. We're ready to move. And the time has arrived. It's our time or it's your time. And we're helped, I think, by the fact that Venus is in Gemini as well. So the two benefics... Venus and Jupiter, Venus is a lesser benefic, Jupiter is a greater benefic, are both in Gemini. So it's a, it can be a very fortunate time, provided, of course, you make the right decisions. And in that light, I do have to make a few um, comments about Mercury. Uh, Mercury rules Gemini. And... This weekend, Mercury is in a somewhat parlous state. Uh, it is, um, it's semi-square Neptune. And that's not just, it's not just any semi-square. Because Mercury is on the Aries point. It's 45 degrees from zero degrees Aries. And Neptune is pretty much at zero degrees Aries. Neptune's get, getting really close to zero degrees Aries. It doesn't actually get there. It goes retrograde, I think, at 29, 55 Pisces. But still, you've got Mercury, Mercury semi-square Neptune. And there's plenty of opportunity there for getting really confused, for getting the wrong ideas, 
And that can be a problem with Gemini. Um, a Gemini can fixate on one thing. It can have all these possibilities and then think, you know, and then think oh, I'm going to go for that. It looks good. Sounded like a good idea at the time, but was it a good idea at the time? Well, we don't know. But I think um, you have to be very careful this weekend about jumping to conclusions. You might think you've really got it sorted out, but not necessarily. Uh, you have to really think it through. And I'm hoping that the moon trine Merc moon in Capricorn trine Mercury on Sunday, um, actually it could be on Monday if you're in Australia or New Zealand, but that moon trine Mercury is going to encourage you to really think things through and really, you know, hold back, think things, think things through, ask yourself, is this a good idea? Really work it out. And that way you can perhaps um, inform yourself about whether or not a particular action really is a good idea. So do be a bit careful in this light. Finally, I should say something about relationships. Um, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, which is your opposite sign. Jupiter's moving into Gemini. So from a relationship perspective, that could be good. Jupiter represents another person. Jupiter represents someone who likes you, finds you interesting, uh, um, wants to get closer to you. So who is Jupiter? And, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, romance. Uh, it's whatever relationship matters it could be, I suppose it could be someone with your family, it could be a friend, it, it could be just some stranger. It's just someone new seems to be coming, arriving on the scene. And this person needs to be taken seriously. And they may have, you know, they may be optimistic, and they may have real vision. But you shouldn't necessarily trust them because they're Jupiter in Gemini. Jupiter is in its detriment. So just because someone says, you know, says things that sound impressive, that sound optimistic, doesn't mean to say that you can say that you should believe what they say. But you need to hear them out. Um, Jupiter and Gemini can represent someone who is good for you, can represent, or I suppose, someone who is bad for you. It it kind of depends on the situation. But do look out for someone who is represented by Jupiter and Gemini, who could be a larger than life person. Although it could be someone you already know. Um, because, you know, Jupiter has just changed sign from Taurus to Gemini. So maybe someone you know, someone you perhaps you already live with, or you might even be married to them, they'd suddenly become... Um, become more positive, more optimistic, and that, and you know, you know, more, uh, yeah, better prepared to sort of look at the future in in a in a positive way. And some of their their negativity might might have might be starting to disappear. And I think that would be that is a, a good thing. Cancer. The moon is now in Capricorn. And I, I understand that, you know, a couple of Cancerians have been feeling that the last couple, couple of days haven't been great. And uh, I do get that. And uh, with the moon in Capricorn, it is a change. You know, I think that the moon in Sagittarius might have been a little bit exhausting. Uh, you just might have had to focus on stuff you didn't really want to focus on. Plus, you've had the full moon, and the full moon has been uh, a bit of a pain. Cancerians, you know, do get rather affected by the full moon. And so, with a moon moving into Capricorn, um, there may be a certain sense of relief that something is finally over, that you can more be yourself. Now, I understand that Capricorn and Cancer are opposed to each other, yet there are certain similarities between Cancer and Capricorn. I mean, I think that both signs, even though they are opposite each other, they, they do understand the importance of security. And I think that the general atmosphere with Moon in Capricorn is going to be sort of more reassuring and... At the same time, the moon in Capricorn, 
you are going to have to take into account what other people are doing and what they're saying and how they're behaving and you'll you will realize that other people's actions do we you know will have an impact on you um but really i i think this needn't needn't be a problem especially as on sunday we get the moon we we get a trine aspect between the moon and mercury and so with moon and mercury um moon mercury trine uh, it, it may actually be easier for you to communicate than it has been of late you you will be able to get your message across and i think the reason you'll be able to get your message across is because because you're going to be able to understand another person you'll be able to understand what makes them tick what's important to them and because of that sensitivity um you'll you'll be able to speak to them in a really sort of no nonsense way and i think that you know you'll be able to um you'll be able to you know, get get results but communication can happen at, at on many different levels and if you're trying to persuade someone to do something then you know you have to think about how you're going to persuade them and what the best approach might be and it's possible that you have to be quite subtle about it um not be direct i think it is important not to be direct uh, you you don't have to say it as it is you can you can use you can be you can um you can imply things and those implications will be understood so um there's no need to um there's no need to be too over the top today i mean i mean a lot of other people will be over the top but i don't think you you will and um, i think that you'll also understand with that natural cancerian emotional intuition that not everyone can be believed i think that will be quite clear to you um that it's it's clear who's telling the lies and who's not telling the lies because this weekend a lot of people are lying they might even not know they're lying but they're still lying and i think where there's deceit i think the cancerian alarm bells will be ringing um so that's good uh, that you you're uh, you're sensitive to this because you know there is there is scope for being pulled in the wrong direction but not for you cancer i i think you're too canny for that leo leo you are starting to feel the impact of the moon moving into capricorn uh, and it is a change because when because when the moon moves into capricorn it does depend to an extent on your time zone it might be on saturday it might be on sunday but still the moon is starting to move out of sagittarius into capricorn and that is a change i think that with the moon moving into capricorn you you are going to have to take things more slowly or rather i think it would be best if you were to take things more slowly it seems that there are things that need to be prepared and what was easy a day or two ago might become more difficult and i think the reason it might become more difficult is because when you first start something it's easy because it's new uh, you, you you know it's it's new and exciting but now that things now that there's been a bit of time has elapsed you're starting to realize that if you want to be able to see things through you're going to have to put in the effort and it is requ- going to require a little bit of discipline and i think um leo i think leo that is something that you are going to be able to do and you have to make sure leo and perhaps this is the most important thing you have to make sure that you've got your facts right um, not so long ago it didn't matter 
but now it does matter and you know one reason it does matter is because mercury is making a semi square to neptune and sure you might have ideas about where you should be going what you should be doing but with mercury semi square neptune you have to consider whether or not these ideas can be trusted uh, there's a real possibility that you've misunderstood something or in certain situations you may have been perhaps overly vulnerable to flattery or you've taken what someone says to you at face value when in fact it's it's complete garbage it doesn't seem like garbage at the time at now but it, it it if you really think about it and if you give yourself the time to think about it then i think leo you will realize what you're dealing with and and you'll realize that you've perhaps got got some false information fortunately on sunday perhaps monday depends on your time zone a bit um the moon is making a trine to mercury and that trine to mercury is in earth signs um, I, I understand earth signs are not something you're entirely comfortable leo far sign but uh, the moon is in capricorn mercury is in taurus and i think that if you're able to really think something through and really focus on the details on sunday and give yourself some space to just really work out whether something can be trusted uh you'll reach the right conclusions uh it might be a little bit painful uh to understand the truth about something but the truth has been starting to manifest for for a bit of time you know remember a couple of days ago we had the full moon seeing a little bit of uh truth coming in with the full moon full moons are always about truth and i think with that moon sex trine mercury um on sunday towards the end of a weekend into monday i think that things will really uh start to start to click though i should i want to try to end on a bit of a positive note and i we can't we can't deny that jupiter has gone into gemini and so jupiter's going to be in gemini for uh the next year and that jupiter in gemini does allow you to benefit from your social life and to meet new people and to have plenty of variety i think in many respects the next year could be quite exciting and all things being equal and it's it's a time to be thinking you know not just about um what you are trying to achieve but also why you're trying to achieve and uh, trying to achieve it and there may be a lot of thought about what your hopes for the future are so really concentrate on that um, over the next or few months as jupiter establishes itself in gemini and you might have some really quite interesting revelation but don't scatter your energy too much with jupiter and gemini Ju- jupiter and gemini could encourage you to do that but you need to really home in on what you're trying to achieve in a but in a way that transcends questions of money power and status virgo mercury is the ruler of virgo and i think we really do need to focus on what's going on with mercury because this weekend things are going on with mercury which you do need to be aware of and um mercury is making a semi square with neptune mercury is also on the aries point so you know by 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 a 45 degree aspect because mercury is at 15 degrees taurus this weekend so that means that it's yeah it's 45 degrees from 0 degrees aries so with mercury at 15 degrees taurus you really do need to um think about the information coming in and the quality of the information coming in and you know also you're very focused on your place in the world the aries point is about the world in general 
I think that you you're perhaps more sensitive than usual to what's happening in the world, not just in your immediate environment. And um, so I think that you may be concerned that, that things happening out there um, are going to affect you. So, for example, if you're in the UK, you're thinking, hold on, there's going to be an election on July, on July the 4th. Uh, how's that going to affect me? Uh, it could affect you. It will affect you. you know, people often say, oh, change of government. It doesn't make any difference. It always makes a difference. Always makes a difference. I know people talk about uni parties and so on. Changes of government are not trivial events. And it looks like there is going to be, a, if you're in the UK, there is going to be a change of government. It's going to impact you if you're a UK Gemini. Um, that's, for example, you don't have, It's even if you're not in the UK, Mercury in... 45 degrees 45 degrees from the Aries point does mean that political processes, social processes are going to have an impact on you and you're going to know they're going to have an impact on you. It's, it's going to be obvious and there could at the same time be a little bit of uh, concern and worry about it. After all, Mercury is semi-square Neptune and, and Neptune is moving on to the Aries point and... I think in some respects it is good that you're having these concerns and worries because you're preparing yourself, but you don't want to be overwhelmed by it. You know, It's easy to be overwhelmed by these social events to think that they're just uh, you know, so important that you can't think straight and getting obsessed by the news. And so you don't want to confuse yourself. You don't want to overreact. Because I think with, with Mercury, semi-square, Neptune, there may be a certain tendency to overreact. And that's not something you want to do. Um, and you shouldn't reach conclusion, conclusions this weekend. Try not to reach conclusions, um, especially, on, especially on Saturday. Um, though on a more positive note... You know, Neptune is a is a planet that is associated with spirituality and with higher powers, and with Mercury making a semi square to Neptune. I think that you do have access to um, higher powers. Think things happening up there in the cosmos, and it could influence you. And okay, you could be overwhelmed by it, but if you keep some perspective there, I think that from a spiritual point of view, it, it could be quite a powerful weekend when you start to really understand the processes going on out there and perhaps how you might be able to respond to them. And then turning to Sunday, perhaps Monday, depending on your time zone, the moon in uh, Capricorn makes a trine to Mercury. Now, that is fortunate um, because, you know, the moon in Capricorn, it's in an earth sign. Mercury's in Taurus. That's an earth sign. And of course, Virgo is an earth sign. And so I think that that moon trine Mercury may help ground things. And I'm kind of hopeful that you may be able to think things through and work out what needs to be done and just get a general feel for what's happening and being able to sort out the information. That's always an important thing for Virgo, to be able to sort out the information. Yeah, but a lot of information coming in. A lot of that information is wrong. Uh, some of it is distorted and some of it is really crystal clear, totally accurate, and you need to be able to differentiate between that. And I think that that is um, something that you're going to be able to do. Um, one final point, Jupiter's moving into Gemini. Uh, overall, uh, that I think could be quite a fortunate event because Gemini is a sign connected with uh, status, uh, how you perceive yourself in terms of advancement. And so perhaps with Jupiter and Gemini, for some Virgos, may bring new opportunities as far as um, uh, work, career, if that's relevant to you. 
but also just maybe about how you see yourself in society and how you see yourself advancing in society and making sense of society. And I think Jupiter and Gemini could help you um, in terms of of working it out. I'm not going to go into any more detail about it now, but I will be returning to this theme of Jupiter, about Jupiter, what, what it means for Jupiter to be in Gemini for a Virgo as I just as I go through uh, my daily forecasts, you know, over the next <laughs> over the next few months, I will be con- constantly going back to what it means for Jupiter to be in Gemini. So I will be returning to that theme uh, quite a lot when I when I look at your horoscopes in the future. Horoscope um, in the future. Libra, you are now starting to sort of realise, I think, that Venus is <laughs> Venus has changed sign. And what does it mean for uh, Venus to be in Gemini? Uh, this weekend, it's uh, yeah, Venus is at uh, in the third degree of Gemini, and I, I think that Libra, you you're aware of what's possible. Um, I think the world may be starting to become more interesting, not least because it's not just Venus that's gone into Gemini, it's just Jupiter is going into Gemini as well. And that is a that is a big deal. You know, both Venus and Jupiter, both for benefics um, going into Gemini. And of course, Venus is your ruler. And fr- uh, from a Libran view, you know, you know, Gemini is an air sign, and Libra is an air sign, and so having Venus and Jupiter moving through an air sign, moving into an air sign, just may make things just a whole lot easier. You know, you're going to be less introspective than you were when you know when you had Jupiter in Taurus, and of course Venus was in Taurus until very recently. You're going to be less introspective and you're going to be more aware of possibilities because, you know, there are real possibilities that are now right there in front of you. It's it's all starting to happen and you are not satisfied with the way things are, I don't think, because Venus does trine Pluto. And so with Venus trine Pluto... Um, you are perhaps tuning into your own power. I think you've been th- you were you've been thinking about your power for a long time, what you can do, what you can't do, but now you're really in touch with your own power, and it's actually going to be quite easy, Libra, for you to make things happen. Um, you can make things happen if you want something to happen. Then there's a good chance, Libra, that you can actually make it happen through the gentle exercise of your willpower. I say gentle because it's a trine. You don't have to make a big fuss about it. You don't have to be confrontational. You can just gently make things happen. And I think, um, you know, that is great. And so I think, you know, with Jupiter, also with with Jupiter and Jupiter moving into Gemini, and it's Remember, Jupiter moves into Gemini, uh, well, London time, it moves into Gemini uh, zero degrees just after midnight on Sunday. Okay, if you're, um, uh, if you're in Australia and New Zealand, it will still be in, be in Sunday, it'll be Sunday, uh, late on, later on Sunday. Uh, if you're in the Americas, Jupiter will move into Gemini on, on Saturday sort of Saturday evening uh, or even late afternoon if you're in California but Jupiter and Gemini is about seeing new possibilities and it may well have a philosophical and spiritual nature Jupiter and Gemini it's going to be uh, for a Libran you're going to want to sort of look at yourself um, in in terms of a wider view 
and perhaps being able to look beyond you know your earthly lifespan it's an ex in an extreme way to look you know what happens afterwards so those kind of questions might be important to you but you can't spend too long um, analyzing the nuts and bolts and details of particular ideas that you come across at, at some stage you have to stop asking questions and sort of enter into a sort of broad view of the world which just goes beyond uh, the social details and that could be a bit tough and uh, Jupiter and Gemini can tend to split things up and so if you, if you if you feel that there's something missing in your life and you feel that some spiritual belief or a, or a philosophy isn't going to be going to help you give, it's going to help make up for what you know whatever you feel is missing and i think having a direction and a philosophy even a religion can be really useful but if you ask too many questions or if you try to do what is socially convenient that's not what it's about you have to consider the broad view and that could be a challenge for you but i think it's a challenge that uh, you're up to and i think you've just got to look perhaps beyond social niceties to really tap into what is really important and yeah i think that is uh, something that you can definitely do so don't forget your basic foundations. Basic foundations do matter this weekend, um, particularly um, on Sunday. You can't just go floating around, um, moving from this place to that place. At, at a certain stage, you're going to have to return to somewhere you feel safe because it's when you've, when you've returned to somewhere that you feel safe is that you can start to analyse things and work out what is good and what is bad and what is real and what is plain fantasy. Uh, because there is some tendency for Libra to drift off on fantasy, but it's unnecessary, um, particularly on Sunday. You can, Sunday is a time for grounding yourself and just working out what is real. Scorpio. Scorpio, you are perhaps trying to make things um, quite, uh, you know, you're trying to create some kind of grounding here. Um, you understand that a lot of people are drifting off everywhere. You can see, you can see it in other people. You can perhaps even see it in society that things are not, uh, are not holding firm. Uh, the centre seems to be weak. <laughs> the centre is maybe not holding, at least from a sort of, from a Scorpio perspective, and you may be thinking, you know, how, how can things be brought down to earth? And it may be a situation where you have to communicate. You just maybe you may have to tell people what is wrong. There's something not quite right. Uh, it's not about you, but it's just that you're the sensible one in the room. You just need to accept that. Um, of all the 12 signs, you're probably the one that is most grounded this weekend. And you can see, you can see people making mistakes a mile off. You, can, you, you see people deluding themselves. You see people getting overexcited. And it, you'd, perhaps you just shake your head. But... I think that you can have an influence and you just need to keep your focus. Just keep focusing on the things that matter. Keep explaining the important details. Um, it seems tedious. It may well be that other people are going to find you to be tedious, but <laughs> that can't be helped. We're thinking about what you need to be doing this weekend. And I think that uh, in the end, you will be able to get your message across. Though, you know, do consider the possibility that there is a two-way process at work. Yes, you are trying to influence 
the world around you, but the the world around you is trying to influence you. Um, now, there's no reason why you can't be influenced in a constructive way, but a lot of the information that's that, that's that's come that's moving in your direction probably can't be trusted, and you need to, you know, make sure that. Um, you know, you need to make sure that you're not being deluded. Yeah, even Scorpios can be deluded. So that what's, that's what I mean by this two-way flow of information. And, you know, certain people, I think, can be very influential, perhaps people you know well. And it's easy to listen to them and, yes, be influenced by them. And you have to consider whether that influence is actually useful. But overall this weekend, if you change your mind this weekend on the basis of what someone is telling you, then consider the possibility that you were wrong to change your mind and actually that you were right all along. So really do um, consider that. And, you know, with Mercury making a semi-square to Neptune, you know, some people really are very confused. You know, people you know very well, they're, inf they're, they're inf being influenced by the wrong thing. And you can see it. And you, you, you have to work out how to, how to deal with it. Um, because, you know, there is a lot of fantasy around. But fortunately, in terms of yourself, you benefit, as I said, from the moon being in Capricorn. The moon in Capricorn is going to ground you and it's going to make sure that you have the right ideas. And if you're able to think things through in your own way, um, you will, I'm sure, reach the right conclusions. Sagittarius. Jupiter is your ruler and Jupiter is changing sign and that I think is a big deal. Um, so Jupiter has been in Taurus for the last year, I mean in fact I think over a year and Jupiter in Taurus from a Sagittarian perspective it might have been a little bit boring, it might have felt that there was just work to be done, having to engage in things that are rather tedious. So I'm hoping that over the last year, Sagittarius, you did get some sort of valuable insights about your health and well-being. Um, so think perhaps about the last year and what, what realizations you had about your body and your health and ask yourself, did you put those realizations into practice and I think you realize that certain things were bad for you and you maybe made a resolution to um, change them, to change habits, to change bad habits, perhaps introduce new and healthy habits. So think back about those resolutions and make sure that you put them into practice if that is medically appropriate. I'm not here to give medical advice, I must make that clear. So that was one aspect of Jupiter in being in Taurus, but it was a little bit boring. And with, or it could have been a little bit boring, but with Jupiter now moving into Gemini, it, it does brighten things up. Um, so with Jupiter, your, Jupiter, your ruler now in Gemini, I think, you know, over the next year, you are going to have to give more consideration to other people. Uh, I think you're going to be very aware about how other people are going to influence you um, for better or for worse. And you may have to cons have to work out which people can be trusted, which people you want to get close to, which people you want to avoid. That really is something you're going to have to consider. And I think it's very likely with Jupiter moving into Gemini that you know there could be new relationships people new coming into your life though if there's a downside 
to Jupiter in Gemini over the next year, you may be getting yourself into situations where you don't have as much control as you'd like to have. I mean, the symbolism is quite clear. Jupiter in Gemini, it means you could say Jupiter is you because Jupiter rules rules Sagittarius, but you are kind of straying into someone else's territory represented by the sign Gemini. So you might get yourself into a situation where you actually don't have a great deal of control, where you're you're having to work with someone else's rules. Now, I'm not saying that that is inevitable. I'm just saying that it's something you have to be aware of. Um, And it may be okay. Just because you're on someone else's territory and you're having to work according to someone else's rules doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It could be a good thing. But all things being equal, I think it is something that you actually have to be very careful about. And as far as this weekend is is concerned, you perhaps have to be careful about other people as well because Mercury is ruler of Gemini. Gemini is your opposite sign and Mercury is semi-square Neptune. Uh, Some people who perhaps should know better seem to be quite confused or they could be confusing and... I wouldn't take anything that anyone says at face value. You have to be a little bit serious. And with the moon in Capricorn, uh, Sagittarius, you have to realise, you know, what what matters. I mean, one thing that matters is money. Moon is in Capricorn. From a Sagittarian view, Capricorn is very much associated with money. And so with moon in Capricorn, money is something you need to be thinking about. And you need to be working out what what you can what you can handle um are you spending too much money um uh, perhaps but with moon trine mercury I, that moon trine mercury is on sunday perhaps monday if you're uh in um east asia australia new zealand but that moon trine mercury does actually allow you to focus on the important things in terms of your finances and that's perhaps maybe what you should be doing during the last part of a weekend you know getting everything in order uh, it might be a little tedious but i think you'll you'll cover a lot of ground and i think that's um something sagittarius that you should be concentrating on capricorn capricorn uh the moon is now moving through Capricorn, your sign. And uh, I think that is very welcome. I, If I remember yesterday, I was a little bit negative when I was talking to, talking to you. Uh, but this weekend, as the moon get, goes into Capricorn, things are going to get easier. Now, when the moon moves into Capricorn... As I said, when I was introducing the overall planetary picture, it does rather depend on um, where you are. Um, In the Americas, it's sort of in the morning on Saturday. In Europe, late afternoon. Uh, In in Australia and New Zealand, it's more about Sunday. So do bear in mind the time zone issue there. But... With the moon moving into your sign, I think you're going to feel much more comfortable. You'll feel that you you are in your comfort zone and that you're better able to assert yourself because you just feel more in control. And however chaotic the world out there is, you know, you understand what's going on and you feel that you know how to look after yourself and the moon is making a trine to mercury and so with that trine to mercury you're able to think straight uh, and because the moon is mercury is in taurus and you know taurus is an earth sign like you capricorn is an earth sign the moon is in capricorn so that moon trine taurus does allow you to 
work on what you are doing, um, you know, what's important to you. And you can be both sensible and creative at the same time. So you can be um, you can be grounded, you can know what's important, but you can also be doing something which is important to you. Um, and, and, important and fulfilling because you essentially know that it is an essential part of your destiny and I think that that is something that you can address in a way that uh, is really very effective and you should not underestimate the influence you have Um, at the moment I think that you can have a powerful influence on the world around you. Um, you don't have to shout. You you don't have to bark orders. You just have a natural influence to you. And I think that if, if you express your views, especially on Sunday with that moon trine Mercury, I think people will listen. And I think that you'll be able to get your get your point of view across in a way that is really very straightforward and I don't think that you need to have um, arguments about it and uh, so overall Capricorn I'm not saying it's going to be a spectacular weekend Um, I don't think it's going to be that much drama at least as far as you are concerned okay you might be aware of other people's drama but I don't think it's going to affect you And I think you can just quietly um, get on with it and also express yourself in a no-nonsense kind of way. Aquarius. There are a lot of things that have been going on and Jupiter has been moving into, is is moving into Gemini. Uh, I think all things being equal, that Jupiter moving into Gemini is a good thing. Um, I think that, you know, you, you Aquarius, you are, um, you are an, an air sign. And, you know, for a long time, over a year, Jupiter has been in Taurus. And that's, that's perhaps been a little bit tedious for you. You just had to be focused, you may be focusing on things that are important, but not necessarily interesting. And with Jupiter moving into moving into Gemini, uh, you, I think, will have a greater sense of your creativity. And I think you're going to have greater, more flexibility. You're going to be thinking about all sorts of possibilities. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, yes, there is great creative potential with Jupiter moving into Gemini. But Jupiter can kind of, is in Gemini. It's kind of a bit all over the place. Uh, Jupiter can be a little too flexible, can be a bit insincere. So there is some danger that you sort of get into, get into creativity in a sort of a half-hearted way. You get involved in one thing, you get involved in another thing. It seems fun, you get bored, you move into something else. That's not the way to do it. I think that if you feel that there's some creative gap in your life, you have to think what is right for you. Um, Because if you just focus, if you just follow follow Jupiter and Gemini, you could just be all over the place. And in a year's time, you might have found that you've accomplished absolutely nothing. And so Aquarius, um, I would try to focus on a single um, creative venture, maybe two. Okay. It is Jupiter and Gemini. Uh, Gemini is the twins. Perhaps focus on two creative ventures over the next week. Uh, Sorry, over the next year. Focus on two things. Um, Two things that are very important to you, that you know you're good at, or you're pretty sure you can be good at, and things that can really make you feel happy and um, uh, fulfilled. And just if you can do that, then you'll be doing the right thing. And perhaps at a later stage, you'll realize that one thing is, you know, one of your ventures is working and it's something you're really into. The other thing can fall by the wayside. So perhaps that's a way to handle 
uh, Jupiter moving into Gemini. Now, on a more short-term note, um, Venus is making a trine to Pluto. And Pluto, as you know, is in your in your sign. It's currently at around 159 Aquarius, going retrograde. And Venus is making a trine to Pluto. And I think that with that Venus trine Pluto, uh, you can be very persuasive and you can be influential, but in a rather light way. Um, you know, not in a sort of power-hungry way, but just more about... You know, discussing your ideas, telling people about your ideas and what's important to you. And I think people are going to just listen to you and think, actually, you are a fun, interesting person. And so perhaps now is now is a time to really start talking about what you want to achieve. Perhaps you want what you want other people to achieve as well. So if you've got some project or venture that you're interested in, now might be the time to start communicating it because I do think that people will listen to you. But there's no need to talk about everything. There are there are some things this weekend that you need to hold back on. Um, they could be secrets. They could be things that really should not be talked about right now and I don't want to be too serious and heavy about that just some things there's just no point uh, in talking about them in fact the thing you should not be talking about is the material aspect of it maybe the financial aspect of things that needs to be held back uh, if you start talking about the financial dimension of something even though you might think it's really important if you start talking about the financial dimension of things, it just could just cause a block. People might glaze over or they might get worried. Uh, leave the finances for later. And you, you can you can think about the financial dimension privately in your own way. Or, OK, you might be in a position where you can talk to people you really trust about about money and security issues but don't tell the whole world about about money and security issues because maybe you'll frighten them off or maybe you'll worry them but uh, uh i think i think aquarius if it's it is a time for preparation and uh, a couple of conversations may be a good way of feeling things out just see how people respond and that might give you an idea about how how best to handle things over the months to come pisces well pisces jupiter is changing sign and jupiter of course uh, is your ruler um, yeah i understand that neptune has a sympathy with Pisces, but having a sympathy is not the same thing as having a having rulership. And so Jupiter is your ruler and Jupiter's changing sign. And with Jupiter moving into moving into Gemini Pisces, I do think that it's a, a time when you start need to start thinking about um, making sure that your grounding is all in order. I think that's that's really important because you know Jupiter is in you know Jupiter's moving into Gemini, and I know Gemini has this sort of reputation for being a sign that's a bit flighty, changeable, but from a Piscean view. Gemini is at the absolute bottom of your chart. It is about the foundation of things. And so with Jupiter moving into Gemini, you should be focused on the foundation of things and you should be thinking about the foundation of things. And it doesn't mean that you have to stay in one place. It just means that you have to be actively engaged on the issue of your own security and your own grounding. And 
it's it's I think something that has been building up you know over the last couple of, over the last week but now I think it's becoming very clear with with Jupiter moving um, moving into Gemini and the concept of security and foundations it's, it's not entirely obvious what that means it can mean different things for different people and with Jupiter and Gemini it's 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 not just about you know I don't know making sure you've got a place to live it's, it's other things uh, it's making sure that you have sufficient freedom and flow i mean we have to remember that pisces is a mutable sign it it, it re- represents the sea uh moving be being able to move from one place to another if you are stuck in one place that's not necessarily security from a piscean perspective so you need to have variety in your life in order to be not just free but also to be secure because if you don't have variety in your life, well, things rot, don't they? <laughs> the foundations will rot if they stay in one place for too long. Um, because we're looking at things, again, from a Piscean perspective. So you need to give yourself that freedom and that perhaps that intellectual and cultural freedom. Because that's important, really, it's, it's, important, it's, it's important to who you, who you are. And in the process, you possibly shouldn't be listening too hard to what other people are saying i mean particularly this weekend i mean this weekend other people i don't think are to be trusted not because they're necessarily untrustworthy but because other people are just all over the place um you know with mercury semi-square neptune and if you allow other people free reign this weekend it, it it would be a recipe for chaos because they're going to be coming up with all sorts of stuff that is going to, you know, it, it's just going to completely overwhelm you. So I do think this weekend you need to keep your own counsel and make sure that no one person has, um, has too much influence over you um, because, you know, some people just really... Don't seem to know, don't seem to know what they're doing, uh, and if you follow their lead, yeah, there could be trouble. Um, but from your perspective, Jupiter is um, actually Jupiter's actually conjunct the Sun Uranus midpoint, so Jupiter's your ruler. It's conjunct the Sun Uranus midpoint. That does give you give us the indication that this weekend you can do something surprising. Sun Uranus is about, um, I suppose, suddenly expressing your view, suddenly doing something perhaps that no one else was expecting, that no one was expecting. Suddenly your identity is there. People realise who you are, what you are, what you want, and it comes from nowhere. Of course, it doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from you. It comes from your heart. It comes from your soul. And it just appears. And other people with their nonsense, with perhaps with their lies and their confusion and all that kind of stuff, they suddenly see the reality of you. And when they see the reality, everything changes. And perhaps in, a, in, in an instant, you are the one who is in complete control. And... Those are my forecasts for the weekend. And I am now going to look at the weekend from the perspective of the I Ching. And so I ask the question, what is the weekend going to be like for those watching the I Ching segment of this video? And um, the first hexagram I got was hexagram 45 which is gathering together so gathering together would indicate that for many of us it actually could be quite a sociable weekend there are going to be there are going to be people to meet um, 
people to talk to. Um, maybe there is a common goal that you and other people want to gather around and in order to, you know, to achieve whatever you feel that you need to achieve. I th and I think that gives us the suggestion that if there's something you want to do, maybe it's not going to work if you if you try to do it that do it alone. It has to be done in a in a group, and um, with gathering together, there is perhaps an indication of some kind of excitement here. And I suppose this is a reminder that this weekend Jupiter is moving into. Gemini, you know, Jupiter has been in Taurus, it's now being in Gem Gemini. While I wouldn't necessarily say that Gemini was a completely sociable sign, it is a, 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 an idea that, you know, you need, we need change, we need ideas. Jupiter in Gemini is about ideas. Um, and so perhaps gathering together is about, you know, bringing these ideas um, together and you need to do to do that you need to talk to talk to people and see what they have to say now there are three moving lines here and the first moving line is so this this second line from bottom moves and so this second line from bottom is saying don't try to contrive um, your social life too much. Don't don't say to yourself, "Oh, I want to be sociable. Let's see who I'm going to meet. I'm going to go through a diary, and I want to talk to these people, this people, and this people." It's instead, the I Ching is telling us that there are things happening, things things out there. These the wheels are working in the cosmos to bring people together who naturally are, should be together. So if you're supposed to be with someone or with a group of people, you will naturally come together. You will naturally gather together without you having to use force. So in that sense, I think that you can allow the universe to do its work. The universe will naturally bring you and the right people together without you having to think about it. Now, if you think about it too much, then you might bring to get, gather together with people who are just inappropriate, who aren't actually doing you any good. So maybe you should trust the universe a little bit. Um, well, I suppose ideally one should trust the universe totally. Um, although we shouldn't forget that there is Mercury sex, Mercury semi sextile net sorry semi square Neptune that could we don't we we need to we don't want to delude ourselves here but just let let things naturally happen and then the third line moves and the third I mean the third line from the bottom and the third line moves yeah things are starting to move but there may be a certain a feeling that if we are with other people, if you are, I don't know, if you're at a party or I don't know what you're doing, um, uh, whatever you're, if you are socialising this weekend, or even if you're not socialising, if you're just, I don't know, how, how, you know, people meet, you know, on social media, or on the internet, or however you're meeting people, however you're interacting people with people, there may be a certain sense that you just feel a little bit isolated, that uh, you're divorced from the centre of attention and that might concern you um, but it shouldn't concern you because really all you have to do is if you feel yourself to be isolated and that you can't talk and you can't communicate and the, the people around you are not on your wavelength you just need to associate is to you need to identify one person who seems to be in control who seems to be perhaps the leader inverted commas quotation marks or whatever and talk to them you need to just talk to one person and interact with that one person and then you form a link with that person and it will be easier than you think because remember everything is natural it's all it's not not about being contrived and you communicate with one person you get on with that person and then everything fits together and you are um no longer um isolated and that leads to the fourth line and the fourth line, the fourth line from the bottom moves and it's just 
it's it's all about a state of mind it's all about an attitude it's about you thinking about the common good you're not thinking about yourself and your unselfishness is quite clear and people just gravitate towards you naturally and so I think in the end with the, these four flies there may be a bit of a wobble where you think you're isolated but I think that you will really be able to really benefit from this gathering together, people coming together. And this leads to a this, another hexagram, and that leads to hexagram uh, 48. Now, the interesting thing is that yesterday, well, on Friday, I... I did the I Ching and I got the well then. I got the well again. And so that means the well must be important to you. It must be really, it must matter. And remember, the well is about something that is always there. It doesn't matter. We always need water. Um, it doesn't, doesn't matter how society changes, how technology changes. The well is always there. And that is what we should be trying to create here. The well is needed, is we need it for our sustenance, we need it for society's sustenance, and so the well is something that we can, um, we can always use, and that's perhaps what would, we, when I talked about the gap, when we were talking about the gathering together in the previous hexagram, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create a resource, not just us, but other people, a resource which we can rely on in the future. So it doesn't matter how society changes. It doesn't matter whether people move or people change their minds about stuff. It's just always there. So what is it? What is that thing that you need to create that's always there for you? Um, it could be friendship. It could be a source of income. It could be um, it could be very literal. It might be, I don't know, if you have the opportunity, um, you know, planting stuff in your garden which, which you can always use doesn't matter it doesn't matter what inflation what inflation is doing you've always got fresh vegetables in your garden or it could be something like that something that everyone can use all the time maybe not just you so do think about that and i, I think this perhaps particularly applies to sunday maybe because the first hex it's a, it's a hex it's an eye itching for the weekend so gathering together might be more about saturday the well might be more about sunday but just do consider how you and other people can come together and create something that is going to be always there for you. Or perhaps repair something. So perhaps something in the past had always been there and it has sort of fallen into disuse and it just needs to be brought back um, online. And now, having done the I Ching, I want to consider American politics and... Uh, so Donald Trump made this, uh, had this rally, I think, in South Bronx. And before I, before I talk about his chart, um, I just wanted to point something out about the Venus-Jupiter conjunction. Because the Venus-Jupiter conjunction is really quite important, not just in terms of Donald, but in terms of a couple of his supporters. Now let me uh, let me just show you what I mean by this Venus Jupiter conjunction. So um, I mean that that's the chart for Thursday. I mean that's a chart I did for Thursday when I was doing the uh, horoscopes for Thursday. And you see there was a, so there was a Venus Jupiter conjunction on the on on the, when he did that rally. Now two things happened around this time. One thing I already mentioned, Nigel Farage pointed out or said that he wasn't going to stand for parliament because he wanted to help Trump um, with the election. And if you, if you remember from Nigel Farage's chart, there is Nigel Farage's chart. And Nigel Farage has his Venus at um, 29 Taurus. So with that Venus-Jupiter conjunction, and Nigel Farage has his Venus in the ninth house, which is very much associated with foreign stuff. His, he's got Venus in the ninth, whether you use Placidus or whole signs. Um, so Venus-Jupiter, that represented his commitment to 
Donald Trump, but someone else made a commitment to Donald Trump. Someone else said that they were going to vote for Donald Trump. And that was Nikki Haley. So if you remember, Nikki Haley was a candidate for the Republican nomination and she kept going and she said some rather negative things about Trump. But in the end, she said she will be voting for him. And Trump, uh, who had, been, of course, been uh, very negative about her. What did he, didn't he call her bird-brained or something like that? Um, but he had been negative about her. But he was, he was magnanimous. He, he, you know, he said there'll be a place for her. He gave, he has given strong indications that over the last day or two that if he wins the election, there'll be a, there'll be a role for uh, Nikki Haley. Now, with Nikki Haley's chart. Uh, she is probably a Capricorn, but we don't know for sure whether she's a Capricorn. Um, I think if she was born before around, you see, this is a chart for me. I don't know what time she's born. So uh, if she was born at, say, 5 p.m. or earlier, approximately, a bit after 5 p.m., she'd have the sun in Capricorn. So if she was born after five, much after 5 p.m., she'd have the sun in Aquarius. So we don't really know what time she's born. I've, I, so I've set this chart for 5 p.m. just to illustrate the point um, that 5 p.m. would be around, around then would be the critical point, maybe five towards between five and six. I think the sun would, if she was born on that January 20th, 1972, would, would be when the sun would have trans, transitioned from the sun to Capricorn from sorry would have transitioned from Capricorn to Aquarius but so there is her son in Capricorn 29 Capricorn and she has actually a trine between the sun in sun at uh, 29 Capricorn and Saturn at 29 Taurus so she's got a sun Saturn trine in her chart it's always useful having a sun trine Saturn in your chart um and she'll have that trine whether she's got the sun in Capricorn or Aquarius, but I think it would work better if the sun was in Capricorn. You know, very disciplined. She perhaps knows how to look after herself. In fact, she's got a grand trine. Uh, it's not immediately obvious, but she's got a grand trine between sun, Saturn, Pluto. Um, I think that's quite a useful grand trine. It's a dissociate grand trine. Uh, because it's not all in the same element. And anyway, that Venus-Jupiter conjunction, remember, she there was a Venus-Jupiter conjunction around the time she made this announcement that she was going to vote for Trump. And because I think she said yeah, Biden was really far, far worse. That Venus-Jupiter conjunction was at... Um, uh, was it 29 Taurus? So that Venus, Jup sorry, that Venus Jupiter conjunction was exactly on her Saturn and was trying her sun. So Saturn is, that's her sort of holding back. She didn't want to support Trump. She was holding on. But then Venus Jupiter, um, she changed her mind. Uh, maybe it was... Um, Maybe it was an, I don't know, maybe it was an I love Big Brother moment for her. I don't know. But anyway, Venus-Jupiter, um, the Venus-Jupiter conjunction on her Saturn did release release it. And I think that's when she made, you know, when she made the decision. And, you know, I was looking at, you know, I was just had, having a feeling about Trump and, uh, and Nikki Haley. And, um, you know, the fact that the, both of them responded to the Venus-Jupiter conjunction in, in very similar ways. And uh, it seemed to be a little bit of a good omen as far as Trump's campaign. Um, but I'm not, I'm still not ready to, to say that Trump's going to win. I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm ready to say that. I'm not ready to say that. And I think later in this video, later in very soon, I'll be perhaps explaining one, some of my problems here. Um, by the way, I should say that 
You know, there are a number of ways in which you can try to forecast the result of an election. And astrology is not the only way. I just, I, you can actually try to forecast the result of an election by looking at how Democrats are behaving. Um, you know, with all of these, this legal stuff, this way they've been really trying to get at Trump with, in his terms of um, get at him legally, I think Mitt Romney very correctly said that if, if they'd let, if Biden had just not, not prosecuted, had really ordered the prosec federal prosecutions against Trump to, to, to end, if he put pressure on some of the state prosecutions, he would have been coming over as a big guy and Trump would have been coming over as a little guy you know, who, who benefited from uh, Biden's largesse. But Biden just couldn't do that. I suppose he's too petty to do that. But the very, f the very way in which the Democrats are reacting, they are reacting as if Trump is going to win. Um, when people behave like that, that's often a sign that it's going to work the other way. So... If you just want to predict this election from people's behavior, from the behavior of the Democrats, you would predict that Trump is going to win. But I'm not ready to make predictions about who's going to win this election. I just thought I'd point that out. Now, as far as Trump's um, rally in the Bronx is concerned, I, I tried to work out when, it, when exactly he started speaking. I mean, I probably could have done it in the end but uh, in the end I just gave up and I've just gone for the I went for the starting position and this is when the doors opened apparently they, they opened at 3 p.m so I'm assuming that, that Trump started speaking um, later uh, uh, much later certainly uh, for sure he was starting to to, to speak he, he started to speak much later doors opened at 3 p.m I don't know when he started to speak it certainly would have been later and uh as far as whether or not this rally has worked for him um, in terms of the astrology, um, okay, he did this thing on a Venus-Jupiter conjunction. Uh, that has got to be good. And remember, that Venus-Jupiter conjunction heliocentrically is still applying. So that is a really positive way to start to, to have this rally. So that is fortunate. The moon, just after a full moon, I mean, all things being equal, you wouldn't want to do something important just after a full moon, but the moon is kind of applying to a trine of, to a trine of Mars. So maybe that's, that's not such a bad thing, um, moon trine Mars. It's maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's okay. Um, and uh, then there is the question of how it affects Trump's horoscope. So let's uh, let's look at Trump's horoscope, not just in terms of a rally, but you know what is happening at the moment to, for Trump. And uh, because I mean I'm, I just do want to do an update for Trump. So here is Donald Trump. Here's his rally, and there is his there is his chart. So what really strikes out? Well, two things strike out. Now, so assuming Donald Trump's birth time is correct, he has his midheaven at 24 degrees, 22 Taurus. That means you can see Jupiter is now moving very close to his midheaven. Um, it's, sorry, not Jupiter, Uranus. It's really putting him in the spotlight in a big way. And it's going to get stronger over the over the next month. So we're going to you know see more and more about what Donald is doing. So that's the first point. Secondly, uh, we have got a this conjunction between Venus and Jupiter. If you were to apply the, if you were to, if you were to take. Uh, I, it's a long time since I've used that house system, but the equal house system. Venus and Jupiter, that Jupiter, Venus, Jupiter is exactly square his ascendant. You see, he's got his ascendant at 29.58. And that square angle is really does relate to the equal house, the 10th, 
the um, the tenth house in the equal house system, and so it's really hitting it. And so I do think that that Venus Jupiter conjunction has a really strong tenth house feel to it, and it's just so interesting that he had that rally with Venus Jupiter conjunction square his ascendant at the time when Nikki Haley has said she's going to support him, and of course we had Nigel Farage's. Um, uh, said he's going to help. I wouldn't underestimate Nigel Farage. Um, Nigel Farage is just, I know he's a foreigner, but I wouldn't underestimate his his ability. And I just thought it was symbolic um, that some things are perhaps starting to work for Trump. Maybe I'm exaggerating it. But that Venus-Jupiter conjunction, I think, was really powerful for Trump. Uh, I think his short term certainly is really going to help him. And I think that rally was 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 very useful in terms of in terms of his campaign so there are some positive things to look at in terms of trump now i do not believe as i've said before that you can um, predict who's going to win an election on the basis of a horoscope because if that were to be the case parties could just choose people choose leaders who had good horoscopes then there'd be a race to see who could find the leader with the best horoscope. Can you imagine it? Just It just doesn't work like that. You've got to look at wider collective issues. And I think that my big concern as far as Trump, one of my big concerns uh, is his solar return. Uh, so here is Donald Trump's chart. Um, by the way, let me just uh, show you what his equal house system chart would look like. So if I used equal houses, you see there is, if I use, if I set Trump's chart up using equal house, the equal house system, uh, his the beginning of his 10th house would be 2958 Taurus, which, and of course he had, there was a Venus-Jupiter conjunction on his, um, on his equal house, 10th house, just, just, just to show you how that would look. And of course with the equal house system, the midheaven floats, uh, because it's not, not a quadrant system. So let me just turn that back to Placidus. Uh, Okay, so I want to look at Trump's solar return for 2024. And I've looked at this chart before, and I really don't like Trump's solar return for 2024. Not at all. Um, the, the problem with Trump's solar return is there are two big problems. He's got the moon is opposition Saturn, which is not good. Uh, moon applying to Saturn. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, okay, Saturn is close to his midheaven. And the moon is kind of making this T-square. You've got moon, opposition, Saturn, and then it's hitting his sun and his Mercury. So sun-Mercury conjunction, square Saturn, and then moon is making an opposition to Saturn, and then it makes a square to sun and Mercury. Uh, I, I think that does... But that does worry me um, to an extent. If you're interested, here is his converse um, solar return set for, uh, you know, 78 years before he was born. Um, I think I have looked at this chart before, set for 1868. Uh, that's a more interesting chart because we have Uranus on the midheaven. Um, uh, and he's got Jupiter on the descendant. Uh, Jupiter square Uranus. I suppose that could be relief. You could say, well, that's him. This is a chart for him winning. It <laughs> could be. Uranus on the midheaven, a sudden um, surprise. So that that is that's certainly um, that's certainly a possibility. And I did actually also look at some lunar returns. It's a lunar return when you um, when you go through you know, every every time the the moon returns to where it was when he was born. You set up a new chart and. Here is the lunar return for uh, November the 4th, 2024. This is a lunar return for just before, the day before the election. Uh, and 
remember we had Uranus on the midheaven in the converse solar return. We've got Uranus on the ascendant when he was um, in, in this lunar return. Plus we've got moon conjunct Venus. That's possibly quite useful. Uh, so the lunar return does give a mixed picture. Uh, so, you know, but I don't know. Uh, maybe that lunar return is okay, that moon conjunct Venus. But as I said, I'm not quite ready to sort of make decisions yet about, um, you know, or I don't think I ever will probably. Um, I did finally want to just um, go back to his... Um, I did want to consider his Vedic chart. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's just go to his Vedic chart. Uh, and I think this Vedic chart may, may give us an idea about perhaps where Trump is at the moment. So, at the moment, Trump is in his Jupiter, his his he's in his Jupiter Dasha and his Jupiter Dasha started in um, November 2016 just as he was elected president in 2016 his Jupiter Dasha started and it's a 16 year Dasha and so we could say that Jupiter but Trump being at the, at the top top of flight of American politics it started in 2016, so we could say, well, it could end. It would end when the Jupiter Dasha ended, which is 2032. Which, even if he won, that would be after his ter second term had finished. Um, overall, Jupiter Dasha seems to be working quite well. Now, Trump's weakest planet, in terms of his Ved Vedic astrology, has this counting system: Shad Bala, six. Six level, six method, six ways of looking at strength. His, and it, you give it a number, and the number here you can see that Saturn gets a number of um, 0.59. Saturn is far and away Trump's weakest planet, and there he's got Saturn in the twelfth house. So there's the ascendant. So he's got in his Vedic. In his Vedic astrology, he's got Saturn at, at 12 fits at right at the end. It's regarded as being dead <laughs> um, because it's at right at the beginning, sort of right at the beginning of um, you know all these planets in Vedic astrology. They you know some are some are some are dead, infant, adolescent, um, adult, whatever. But his Saturn is dead, and it's the weakest planet in his chart, and it's in the 12th house. So, it, it's it's not good his Saturn, and interestingly he started his dash his Jupiter Dasha in 2016, but he entered his sec his sub period of Jupiter, um, his sub period ruled by Saturn in 2019, and yes he was president, but from 2019 through to July 2021, after so that was a time where things really went wrong. He, when he, and it include and encompasses a time when he, of course, he lost the presidential election, and he's currently in a period of Jupiter Mercury, um, and this lasts from twenty twenty one through to twenty twenty. Sorry, let's go straight. Jupiter Major Dasha Ketu Sub Dasha. Now, all things being equal, that's certainly not easy. But we can actually see, we now see how it's working for him. It's difficult. He's got His enemies are really coming out of a woodwork um, all over the place. This is how Jupiter Ketu is, is working. And it started in October 2023 and it goes through until September 2024. So it's going to be more of the same. But yes, his enemies are coming out of a woodwork. But what we already know that he is surviving. He is, I don't know, the polls suggest that he's fractionally ahead. So things aren't looking so bad. But then, September the 27th, 2024, he enters a new period. And that lasts until May 2027. And that period is Jupiter, sub, Jupiter is the Mahadasha, and Venus is the Subdasha. And there is his Venus. His Venus... 
it, a lot I, his Venus is okay it's not too weak but it is conjunct Saturn uh, it is in higher degrees from Saturn but it's in the 12th house and I think a lot depends on with Trump whether or not he's going to win is what happens after September the 27th uh, so it's it's that last five weeks or so that last final run up to the elect presidential election uh, that matters so maybe Trump even even, even that I mean, remember he's got a solar return coming up and that solar return may change his luck uh, I would have said in a negative way but then from a Vedic astrology perspective we could see further problems right at the end the end of September but having on the plus side if if we get to mid-October and nothing bad has happened then okay things may be looking good for him but I think over the next few months if I were to be advising Trump I would have said between now and middle of middle of October he has to be he has to be so careful and um, yeah October could be a critical month so I would advise him to be extra careful because it, things are looking good at the moment but I'm just wondering how long ago they're going to stay good because astrologically this is where the flack I believe is going to start but I must emphasize that I am not making any forecasts as yet about who is going to win um, the presidential election. Okay, uh, that uh, is all I'm going to say about Donald Trump. Uh, if you found this video interesting, um, I would be grateful if you were to like it. Uh, if you are not subscribed, I'd be really, really grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks uh, very much for listening and i hope you have a good weekend and i will talk to you again very soon